It's been about seven years since New York policymakers approved the creation of a paid family leave system for the Empire State. So we wanted to check in on the program to see how it's running, including whether New Yorkers are taking advantage of the benefit, why they're utilizing it, and much more. To do all that, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Clarissa Rodriguez, chair of the New York State Workers' Compensation Board, which administers workers' compensation, disability benefits, and paid family leave insurance. Welcome to the show, Chairwoman. Hi, good morning. And also with us is Max Dubin, a special counsel with the State Department of Financial Services, the office that collects and manages paid family utilization data in New York. Welcome to the show, Max. Appreciate it. Thank you, David. So for starters, Clarissa, can you explain the circumstances in which New Yorkers are currently able to access paid family leave and what that benefit can consist of? Paid Family Leave is an employee-funded insurance program that allows eligible employees to take job-protected paid time off for certain qualifying events, such as to bond with a newly born adopted or fostered child, to care for a loved one with a serious health condition, or assist a loved one when a family member is deployed abroad on active military service, or as of March 2020, you can take it to take care of yourself or a dependent child who is under an order of quarantine. Now, New Yorkers can take time off from work in these times of need without having to make that impossible choice between their loved one and their jobs. It's also one of the strongest programs in the nation because of its workplace protections, meaning that employers must keep your job open or offer a similar job with similar pay while you're on leave. And you have a right to continued health insurance under the same terms under active as you would under your active employment. And you also have protections from discrimination and retaliation, meaning that requesting or taking paid family leave cannot be held against you. And there are also many benefits to employers, right? It creates a structured program fully funded by employee payroll contributions, and paid leave has been shown to increase workplace morale and employee retention. You know, it was signed into law in April of 2016 and launched in 2018, and it was phased in over four years. And in that time, both the number of weeks that you could be out of work and the weekly benefit amount has increased over time. It's now fully phased in, and the weekly benefit has essentially doubled. Eligible employees can now take up to 12 weeks off at 67% of their average weekly wage, which is about two-thirds of your wages. Of course, it's up to a cap of 67% of the current New York State's average weekly wage, which is about $1,600 a week. So for instance, if an employee makes about $900 a week, you can get approximately $600 in weekly benefits. And how would you go about actually utilizing it? Is it the case where there's a spot on your time card where you just enter paid family leave, please? Or do you have to submit paperwork to the state to go on this because it is a state benefit? How is it accessed? So if you're an employee, you know, you do have to apply for the leave and you can go to our website, paid family leave dot ny dot gov and we have the claim forms that you have to apply for so depending on what type of leave that you want whether it's to care for a loved one to bond or for military service there's there are different application forms you fill those out you give them to your employer with the supporting documentation they have to turn that around and they actually deal with the insurance company who provided the insurance benefit and it's typically a rider to a disability benefit, which is why my agency has a say in administering the program because we administer also disability benefits. But I should note, you also have to be eligible. So employees who work a regular schedule, like full-time employees that work 20 or more hours a week, become eligible after 26 consecutive weeks of employment, about half a year. Part-time employees who work a regular schedule of less than 20 hours a week, including domestic workers as of 2022, are eligible after working 175 days for that employer. And obviously, they don't need to be consecutive. You can also obtain a waiver, right? So if you're an employee who's never going to become eligible to take paid family leave, let's say you're a seasonal employee, you only work over the holidays, then you can obtain this waiver and then there's no workplace employee contributions that you have to make. If your situation changes, it's automatically revoked and you can start to contribute towards paid family leave and be eligible for the um, for the leave. 
Well, Max, since 2018, when the program took effect, albeit in a more limited fashion than it is now, have New Yorkers been taking advantage of the benefit? Yeah, I mean, we have great news in the data on that. Usage has been high and increasing every year. We can talk about utilization rate, which is the percent of people who have paid family leave who have used it. It went from 1.6% percent of people use it in the first year, and it's almost 2% as of our last year we have data. So we're really happy with those numbers. And and what do you know about why people are utilizing paid family leave? There's obviously a variety of different reasons, but are certain reasons more popular than others? By far, the most common use of paid family leave in New York is for parents to care for a newly born, adopted, or fostered child. In 2021, that was 72% of claims or about 120,000 people took paid family leave for a new child. The rest of the claims, about 38%, are for people taking time to care for a seriously ill family member. The most common use, again, by far, for people taking care of a sick family member is to take care of a sick parent. And then the, the most common other uses for caring for a sick family member is caring for a sick child or a sick spouse. I have to imagine the percentage of uh, instances where paid family leave is utilized to care for a parent is only going to increase in the near future with boomers kind of getting up in age, right? Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, we're, you know, this is one of those uses. I mean, I think people generally think when they hear paid family leave, they think of paternity and maternity leave. But we're really happy. We've seen usage of this other area, which is caring for a sick family member. We've seen those numbers go up every year. It's one of those things that people don't appreciate that they have this incredible flexibility to take paid time off from their job when there is a serious illness in their family and you need to go take care of your family member. And by the way, your family member doesn't have to be in New York. If you have to travel and take care of your sick parents who live somewhere else in the country or out of the country, you can use paid family leave to do that. So we're really happy to see increasing awareness and increasing usage. I know I will say that, you know, it makes sense, but the amount of time people use when they're taking uh, paid family leave to to care for a sick family member is a lot less than when they're taking time to care for a new baby. Um, So we're talking around five weeks on average for um, caring for a sick family member and closer to eight on average when you're taking care of a newly born baby. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So people aren't necessarily, in the example of uh, a new child, uh, utilizing the full 12 weeks? They're not. I mean, I know I I will say there's a difference if we go into the data between the, the, the length of time that men and women tend to take. So women tend to take closer to the full benefit and men take a little bit less, which I think accounts for for the fact that it's not the full time. But I will say, and we are very proud of this, that the percentage of claims for caring for a new baby that are men has increased significantly every year. And that's really important, right? Because this is one of those culture changes as well, right? Now that everybody has this benefit, we're not just talking about maternity leave, which might have been what most people had access to before this law. Um, We're seeing more and more men every year using that to take time off to bond with their their child to take care of their child and 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 help this you know help transition their family uh in this in this challenging time so we're really happy i mean 38 percent of all bonding claims were for men in 2021 and what do you know about utilization of paid family leave by certain industries or maybe certain jobs or the wages of earners? Do you have any sort of insight like that into utilization? Yeah, I mean, I'll say this. The difference is we do get data on the sector that an employee works in. And I don't think that data is particularly interesting. There's not enough variation. But when we talk about wages, I think there's really interesting data here. So in the last four years, 70 to 75 percent of all claims were for workers who made under eighty thousand dollars a year which is around what the statewide average wage is so you're seeing that the vast majority of usage is for low and moderate income new yorkers and in particular 
when you look at the lowest wage band that we collect, so that's that's workers who make less than forty thousand dollars a year, that wage band is the highest percentage or the highest utilization rate in almost every year that we've tracked. So in 2018, 2019, 2020, it was the highest. 2021, it was slightly lower than those who make between 40 and 60,000. So there's significant uptake for people uh, who, who have, you know, who make low and moderate wages. And I think a lot of that is these were people who just never had access to these benefits, right? We're, I think yeah, we estimate that before New York passed its paid family leave law, only about 13% of workers had access to paid family leave and suddenly all workers did. And now you're seeing people take advantage of that, particularly, you know, in these wage bans. Paid family leave was created to ensure that paid time off wasn't an exclusive luxury for the highest paid workers, right? Because think about it. In the private sector, um, a lot of empl- New Yorkers did have access to paid leave, right? But this was created to enable low and moderate wage workers to be there for the families when they needed it the most. And we made that happen. New Yorkers have access and they're using it. I mean, the first year alone, more than 8.5 million working New Yorkers, 2.2 million of whom were not covered by Family and Medical Leave Act, you know, FMLA, had access to paid family leave, which I think is is a remarkable achievement in and of itself. And in terms of going through applications for leave, what sort of fraud, I guess, are you looking for? And has fraud been a problem with people maybe applying for leave for kids that didn't exist or parents that uh, might be healthy? Right. Yeah, no, that's a great question. You know, and while the board, we're not really involved in the reporting or investigating cases of fraud. So we can't speak to that issue um, with, you know, great specificity. But we have not heard feedback that this is by any means a widespread or common problem at all. You know, paid family leave claims require external proof to show that a claim is valid, whether that's a birth certificate for a new child or a medical documentation from a healthcare provider to show that a family member needs care. And that documentation goes directly to the insurer. Insurers have a process for reviewing these claims and ensuring they are valid. They have the discretion to deny a claim if the documentation is insufficient or for several other reasons. And if a New Yorker feels that they've been improperly denied, PFL or have any other PFL claim related dispute issues, they can actually file an appeal for an independent arbitration. And just to clarify my last point about the mechanics of actually applying for leave, you know, an employee gets the form, fills out their section, gives it to the employer to fill out, and then gives back to the employee, gives it back to the employee and the employee submits it to the insurance carrier. So that's why I said the employer in some ways is kind of Mm -hmm. out of it, right? Because you submit the supporting documentation to the insurance company directly as the employee. Well, finally, when you think about increasing utilization uh, of this program in in the future, aside from coming on widely beloved capital podcasts slash radio shows, what do you think the state can do to ensure that more New Yorkers are taking advantage of this benefit? So on on the website that I mentioned earlier, you know, paidfamilyleave.ny.gov, we, the board, actually, we host webinars, informational webinars that go through all of the benefits, all of the eligibility. We give these webinars from the standpoint of an employee, but also the ones that are specifically tailored for employers and HR professionals. So you can go to our website, you can sign up to get notifications about any changes to the law. Um, you know, as as I mentioned earlier, there we have expanded it as um, legislators have felt that they needed to be responsive to the needs of New Yorkers, right? So, for instance, with COVID leave, um, and and now in new in twenty twenty two, you know, we can actually care for a sibling, which is which means we're helping more New Yorkers than ever before. So you can go on our website and get all of that information. Join one of our webinars. And, um, and you'll be able to learn all of the, the incredible benefits. We've done a lot of outreach and education. And I think one of the places that I think there's been a lot of success is reaching healthcare providers, right? Because whether you're, it's a new child or caring for a seriously ill family member, you're interacting with 
uh, healthcare provider at that point. So we've done a lot of work to make sure that they understand the benefits so that they can share that information with people when the time is appropriate. I'll, I'll say that it's fairly recently that I took my paid family leave. And, you know, when we were at the hospital um, doing some of our outpatient work or discharge work that they, you know, they mentioned and provided us some information about the benefit. So I think continuing to reach people at the moment that they most need it is is also going to be, a, you know, a continue to be a strong way to reach people. And, and, then, and the proof is in the numbers. Not only are the the absolute number of claims going up every year, but the rate of claims are going up every year, which means a higher percentage of New York workers are using it every year. And so people are learning about it and word continues to spread. Right. And employers actually have an obligation to tell their employees about paid family leave. So that's also a new requirement. Well, we've been speaking with Clarissa Rodriguez. She's the chair of the New York State Workers' Compensation Board. Chairwoman Rodriguez, thank you so much for making the time. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And we've also been joined by Max Dubin, a special counsel with the State Department of Financial Services. Thanks so much for making the time, Max. Appreciate it. Is your business, agency, or service interested in delivering your message to more than two dozen radio stations statewide carrying Capital Press Room? If so, visit capitalpressroom.org to contact our underwriting team.